Hello, I'm Jeff Byers. Uh, welcome back. And this is uh, module two. And we are just, we just went ahead and exported all the maps for the props. So I believe this is uh, part four. There could be more. <laughs> I think it's part four. So video four, and we need to finish the props up, and we need to get the textures. Um, so we're gonna what we're gonna do is select everything again, and control select, and we're gonna group uh, or not group, but but we're gonna basically combine everything together. That's important. So um, our key select everything, okay? Deselect by holding the control key, and click on the crate because that's something we've already got finished All right so I'm gonna go ahead and go to combine you can see there's combine here or we can go to mesh combine okay right so you've got this guy right here it combines if you hold it over long enough it'll tell you it says combine you can do that for the rest of them there's all kinds of tools up here um, I don't choose to do that I just choose to hold down the space bar and go to mesh and combine you don't need to go into the option box, just combine it. There we go. Now it's all one piece. Okay. We may want to change uh, to rename that, so let's go control A. And we can rename that. Something like uh, latches or handles or whatever. Okay. So handles. And we need to delete by type history. Again, let's center pivot and delete by type history and and freeze transformations okay all right so we still need to to keep these separate from each other okay just because I did not I didn't choose to um, bake both of these together that would have caused all kinds of problems there's a reason why I separated these uh, I know better and I know that this can cause baking issues Okay, having something that close to the box. So I chose not to do that. I chose to go the higher route, which means it would take a lot longer and it'd be a lot more complex and complicated for you guys. So I decided to separate those two, which is fine. It's not going to hurt anything. So now they're combined. Now we need to add the texture maps to these pieces here. Again, um, if I hit the 6 key, you can see that that's textured. We're about ready to go into this piece right here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and right-click over the object. Again, right-click over the object and go to Assign New Material. And let's do a, uh, Arnold Shader, and we're going to do, yes, you guessed it, AI Standard Surface. There we go. We're going to rename this immediately. So click on this guy. We're going to call Handle and we're going to call it TX texture okay perfect and the weight is going to be all the way up I'm going to go faster this time because I think you can you can handle it so we're going to go right next to color all right so with this one um, I, I did not place the textures in the right file so I need to go close that go into my files for where did I put that? Props maps, so they are. There's my props maps. So I'm going to go ahead and select those. Okay. I'm going to copy those. I'm going to go into my folder, my Maya folder. And I'm going to go into and make sure that my textures, and you're actually seeing me put place my textures into the source images folder. So I practice what I preach, right? Okay. So I'm going to go in here and go back in there and you can see that now I go in my color and now I should be able to see them. Okay. This will be off. Filter type. Find your maps and it goes right directly into them and I'm going to look for which ones are they called? Props. There we go. Props. 10001. Base color. Perfect. We'll just pick one. Click on that. There's my base color. Look at that. These colors on there. Cool. I can see it now. Which is awesome. Okay. 
It's a little pixelated, but that's uh, that's okay. And uh, da, 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 color space is RGB. Anything else? Nope. That's all you have to do with this one. Now it is a tile, so tiling. And we need to have UDEM. Okay. Again, it's going to have all kinds of problems. So click generate preview, and look at that. Wow, that's looking good. Sweet. Okay, great. Found all the textures just like that. And let's go back out. Click on that guy. Metalness. Let's go knock this out pretty quickly. So you can see how fast I can do it here. Metalness. And that's the wrong one. Where's my props at? There they are. So metalness props, metalness metallic. There, it, there it is. There's our metallic. Then we're gonna go to raw. Okay, that's that needs to be raw. And this one needs to have alpha as luminance check marked. Metallic, metallic, raw, and tiling, utum, and click generate. Okay, perfect. You know that changed a little bit. Okay, cool. All right, awesome. And then we're going to go to the next one. Okay, go out. And we're getting close here. Roughness. Click on roughness. Textures file. Quadratic off. Find the texture. Props. One scissor one. Um, roughness. There we go. And this will be. Udum Mari Udum, and then this one's going to be raw, and this one will be alpha is luminous as well. Okay, it says three tiles found, we're all good, and scroll down to bump mapping. Okay, same thing. This time we're going to change it to change space normals. Okay, and then quadratic is off. And then we're going to find the normal map. Here we go. Boom, it's done. This needs to be raw though. There we go. So, tiling mode, UDEM. Generate. Perfect. Okay. Alpha's luminous, turn that off. That looks good. I think I got everything. All right, go back. And go back. Okay, that looks good. It's got them all in the right spots. Okay. And that one's not really reflecting the right what it's supposed to look like, but we'll we'll hammer that all out later. So all the textures are on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Renderer. I'm going to go to this. Uh, render port, view port 2, and open this up a little bit more and generate all UV tile preview textures. I'm going to click on reload textures. Okay, and then I'm going to go regenerate all UV texture preview textures. There we go. Let's pack then, just really make that thing work and then close that and then I should have all of them looking exactly right. So I'm going to click off of the wireframe on shaded and let's check them out. That looks pretty dang good. Look at that. Looks great. I like that. Got the rubber handles. Perfect. Okay, everything's on there now. Cool. Alright, let's take a look at what this looks. Um, so, got everything. We need to save it. We're almost, almost there, guys. Almost completely finished here. And I'm going to write completed. And I'm going to put down how many? What I got? 6, 27. Let's go to 27. Alright, great. Save that out. Everything's on there. Everything's looking good. Okay, now now it's now we're ready for uh, lighting. Okay, we need to have a, a floor that for uh, for presentation. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and 
create a floor. Okay. A little presentation, there we go. We could have like a panel or something, that would be kind of cool. You know, you could have like a sci-fi panel. You just a small little panel. Put that in a substance painter, you know. I might do that. You know, UV map that, which is probably, it's already UV mapped properly. All you have to do is export it out, bring it into substance painter. And, and put a couple, you know, panel there. You know, you know. I think you can find some panels somewhere. Um, anyway, or you can just do this. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add, sign a new material, and this will be, of course, a AI standard surface material. And we're gonna go ahead and add a color. We could do a gray. Okay. We could do um, like a, a light blue gray. I like gray. Um, a blue gray would be cool. Kind of in the gray area. There you go. That's awesome. I always I like that kind of um, colors. I don't, you know, you can do solid colors. I tend to do kind of a more of a gray. Okay looks better and that will be your floor so I'm going to click on the texture and call that floor underscore TX and um, IOR is okay because I like reflection that'll give it some depth um, let's turn it down though a little bit let's do 1.25 um, maybe there we go Roughness, bring that down a little bit. 2.1. Okay. Alright, so, getting our scene stage, the front of it. Okay, I'll show you how I do this. Alright, so, um, let's go ahead and get our, our renderings uh, set up. Okay. Now, if I want a render of it just with the uh, wireframe on, you can you can give me something like that. Okay, if I want a wireframe front and back, if I want a screenshot, that's what you would do. And six would give me wireframe on texture. It's not that hard. So, so you could do that. And I've done that before. But we want render. So how do I do a wireframe render? Well, let's go ahead. We got we got the textures on now. Um, so that looks let's get that looking good. Um, so to get a really nice view, okay, we're gonna want to set our camera up. I'll show you how to do that. So you can either look through your perspective, which is fine with me. You don't have to create a camera. If you want to create a camera, you sure can. Um, but we're going to go into the render first. Let's get all that set up. Okay. All right. So get the render set up. I'm going to click on the render settings. You can also go to, if you're done with modeling and texturing, go to the uh, menu set and click on rendering. And you can go to render, render settings there too as well. Okay. I like to go in through here. Okay, so there's render settings. Now how do we set this up? We're going to set this up as a preview first. So we leave it just as default. Okay, leave it as default. But those are the two main areas we're going to uh, kind of mess with to get them looking really nice. The render's really, really nice, super nice. Right now they're at uh, three all the way down, and uh, this this has to do with quality. This has to do with color, and specular transmission, transparency, um, yeah, subsurface scattering. We've got the ray depth, which has which has which has to do that works together. These two work together. 
so the rays, the amount of rays we have um, when we're transmitting and light rays. Transmission has to do with opacity and uh, how nice glass looks, so you might want to turn that up to like 10. But right now we're good. I think everything's set up pretty good. Just to get started. Comments tab, that's important because we're telling it we're, what we're going to want to save it out as an image format. The XR is the highest quality you can get, plus it allows you to do uh, layers, like render layers and stuff like that, compositing that type of thing. We have JPEG. Um, there's, that's your, those are the only, only ones we have to choose. Um, I just keep it at EXR because there's another way I'm going to save. Um, we're not doing animation, so we're not going to worry about that. We're going to go right down to image size. And this needs to be set at um, HD 1080. I believe that's what I'm asking for. And um, everything else looks good. Okay. So that's it. That's all you have to do. It's basically default and change the size, what the render is going to be like. Cool. Once that's done, then we can set this up. So we'll talk about this. All right, so resolution gate. It tells me exactly what is going to be rendered. You have to have that on. And you also have that, need that guy on. So basically, that's a mask that puts around the resolution gate. That's important. If you want to center your object, you can put in a field chart. So I'm going to click on field chart, and this helps me get this set up. Okay? You can see the field chart. You can see the numbers on the field chart. So if I have my crate within those six and six, right? Six and six, and I move that down, you can see I'm still within the six and six. I'm going to get that centered. You can see the top corner, back corner is at an eight. And my bottom corner, that's hard to see, is an 8. Okay. All right. And I can turn my, um, I can turn my field chart off now. now I'm centered perfectly. Okay. Um, I'm going to click on my, um, my floor. And I should put that in a layer. So I'm going to go ahead and Control A. And I'm going to go ahead and click the floor, put it in a layer, rename that layer floor because it kind of got in the way when I'm trying to get everything centered, right? So I'm going to turn that off. And you can see if I click on my field chart now, I can see my numbers, and it's easier to see. So 8. So I'm a little bit high with that. Okay. All right. If I want to get closer, I can. And here's another thing. Once I get it centered, I can turn the field chart off, and I can turn on this one right here. This one is safe safe action. So what I can actually do is go in there and just get these so it touches the safe action. And that will give you enough headroom and bottom room, okay, for your 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 crate. Okay? It's gonna give you a really nice looking shot. Okay? So we're all we're all the camera's all set up. We're just using perspective. I got my camera set up, and um, I've got my uh, resolution gate and my uh, gate mask set up. I've got my safe action set up, and I'm ready to do my first render. But one last thing, I'm going to go to view. This is my front view, and I'm going to go in here to bookmarks and edit bookmark. Okay, so here I'm going to click on new bookmark. Show you something really cool and new. And I'm going to type in crate, okay, front, P-E-R-S-P, -E perspective. I'm going to click apply, okay, okay, and that's good. We're going to close it and hit enter, okay. So make sure you hit enter every time you type in something and then apply and then close, All right? So that is one corner and I want to get the back corner Let's just rotate just rotate like this get it zoomed in again get a nice little view here the back of it get the center okay get it looking nice perfect okay great if I need the field chart I can go in there and add that in there to help me out 
and then I can go to view I can go in here to bookmarks and I'm gonna go to edit bookmarks there we go cool new bookmark okay I'm gonna go in here and type it in create okay underscore back underscore P E R S P okay and I'm gonna go ahead and apply it I should enter it right enter there we go you can see it up there and apply and close so now this is awesome because I can be zoom out and do all this kind of goofy stuff and and go into view you're gonna love this bookmarks oh create create front perspective boom I want the back oh no problem back oh we want the front again okay front awesome isn't that cool alright so you can make several different cameras like if I just want to see the front and show that off big old perspective there show that off get that centered looking really nice good composition and looks good I'm just eyeballing it and go to view bookmarks I want to add a new bookmark just give it a new name create Oops. And it's called the front. Just front um, ortho, right? Kind of ortho. Orthographic, kind of. Hit enter. There we go. Apply it. And then close. Let's say we want to do a side. Kind of a side. Just kind of highlight the side. You know, showing your stuff off. You're really proud of it. And we're showing the side off. So you can do another one. Another render. I know I'm only asking for two, but heck, it's just so much fun, right? Once you get started, you got all the hard parts done. Now it's fun to to look at all the beautiful renders you're gonna have. And let's do this just side, and let's call that ortho as well. All right, that's good. And you keep doing that. Hit enter, apply. All right, so let's go ahead and really just focus on one or a couple the the ones we need to turn in. So front perspective. All right, so there's the front perspective. All right, so let's get the lighting so I can I can move around and not really worry about anything. And so I'm going to get my lighting set up. Okay, I'm not worried about the floor. Um, let's go ahead and click on uh, Arnold. Okay, you find that in the shelf, and we're going to create a create sky dome light. There we go. Now we do need to have, um, we do need to have, and we can actually do a couple renders here as is. Um, let's go ahead and turn on the floor. Let's go ahead and do, but I'm going to get all the lights in there. But before you do that, I'm going to show you something that's really cool. So let's go view and let's go back into the bookmark. Whoops, that's the back. There it is. And um show you something really cool that I kind of found that's new to my 2020. Renderer. Arnold Render. Really awesome. Cool. So check this out, man. Hopefully this works. Um, so I'm going to click off. Click back on here. And I'm on beauty, right? Click on this. Render. Oh, wait for it. Come on. There it is. Yes. Look at that. It's in the viewport. A full render in the viewport. Are you crazy? This is insane. Wow. Okay. It is taking a little while, but look at that. Reflections and the whole thing. That is amazing. Look at that. Yeah. If I let it run long enough, it will actually finish. That is so cool. Look at that. And I can still rotate. It's kind of going to be kind of slow. What's slowing it down is the reflections on the floor, right? So let me close that. Let me stop it a minute. Stop, 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 stop. There we go. So I stopped it. Let's take the floor out and see how fast it will render now. 
Wow, look at that. Pretty fast. That's cool. That is so awesome. And we rotate around, hold down the Alt key. There we go. Very cool. That's awesome. I love that. That's so cool. All right. It's still kind of slow. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I just wanted to show that to you. I want to go back again. Very, very cool. So I'm gonna stop it because it is slow. It can slow you down. But I think that's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, imagine if you had a really fast graphics card. All right. All right. So. All right. So we'll turn that off. All right. So um, that's pretty cool. And um, when we are doing, um, when you are messing with lights, though, we do want to have uh, something on as far as uh, rendering goes. Let's go ahead and go to the Arnold Render. This is a little faster because it's made for this. Okay. So, with this, with this part done. You could probably give me that render, and it looks pretty good, but it could look better. All right, so a couple things I want to show you is I want you to go to HDR, HDR Haven. I, you could say HDRI Haven too. I want you to find a neutral um, HDR image, okay? So I'm going to pause this a minute real quick. Okay, so it is called HDRI Haven. Please excuse me, HDRI Haven. It's been a while since I've been on here. Actually, no, it hasn't. Um, click on HDRIs, and um, let's do an outside. So at door, we have 289 to choose from. What? Yeah, it's crazy. We want a neutral. We, you know, a little warmth is okay, but I don't want anything crazy. No, I do not want to update Adobe. Sorry. So we could do outside. We could do inside. What we need though is need something that's going to reflect the um, metals. So you can't, if your metals don't look like metals, it's because you don't have an HDR image. You have to metal is inherently needing a reflection, a reflection map. So you need to have an environment. So metal will not look like metal unless there's a, a an HDR image or some kind of an image in the background. I choose HR images because they are realistic. So um, what about indoor? Indoor. Let's go to indoor. See what they have for indoor. That might be a little easier to con um, actually control. We need something that is not really warm. That's too warm. Um, something industrial would be kind of fun. Something that's going to be uh, the best. The best neutral is a studio. Um, that might be the best bet. It just doesn't have enough information. Ooh, I like this one. Auto shop. That is awesome. A crate in an auto shop. Oh yeah, I can see that. So let's click on Auto Shop. This looks good. We don't need anything really crazy as far as high resolution. So a uh, 4K would be just fine. Okay, that'll give you just enough dynamic range. So 4K, anything less will not probably give you enough dynamic range. So if you want superior, incredible results, it's going to take you forever though to render and it will take you forever to load. You have to have a really good computer for these two. Um, so I'm going to stick with those, with that one. I do have a good computer. I've done that, the 16K, and I do that for like when I do want to like show off my work, uh, but that's kind of overkill on that one. So we'll do 4K. Let's look at some great results. So just go into folder, copy that, I'm going to put it right into my folder here, my documents folder. My, uh, you guessed it, my folder that I've been working on. And source images and paste that bad boy here. Here we go. That's all you have to do. I do not like leaving my internet open very long. I worry about corruption, so I'm going to turn that off. Airplane mode. Go back into my Maya. 
and we still got this bad boy in the background. I'm going to close that down. Okay, first thing I do is I'm going to add that HDRI image into this. So click on the next to color and texture file off. This has to be a raw image, meaning that this has to be raw. Oh, I do have one in there. Let's just do this one though. This will be fun. All right, and um, well, let's see here. And we want raw. Looks like it, it did it already for me. And that is all we need to do for that. Um, so let's click on that. Okay, and when you click on it, it goes back to this the attributes that is in there. Um, resolution, well, it's not 1K, it's not 2K, it's 4K, 4,000. Okay, perfect. Intensity, um, it's pretty intense. Um, when I do a lighting system, I usually don't have this up that high. Um, we can keep it there. Samples, I wanted to do two samples. Um, cast shadows, yes. Everything else looks good. If you don't want to see the image, you can turn that to zero, and it will be it'll render black. It will. Um, sometimes I do that. I don't like black. I like gray. Uh, black. The problem with black is that it hides your shadows. Doesn't look good. Like a medium gray is good. So medium gray would be like something like 0.25. But let's just keep it at one for now, so we can see the background. So let's take a a, a gander at our first. Uh, render. Um, let's go ahead and um, I would highly recommend you save your work right now. Uh, let's do uh, completed. Let's just keep adding to this until it kicks it out. Lighting. Okay, there we go. And turn that to 27. Save. Yep. Looks good. Everything's good for now. Let's let's match the exposure to uh, one to one. It's a good idea. Okay. All right. So let's go back to Arnold up here at the top and go back to your render. And it's it opened up. There it is. And do a quick render. Okay, I'm going to pause it. So to pause it, just click on the the red. So you're going to click on stop. So it's stopped. Or is it rendering? I think it stopped, didn't it? Nope. Okay, so now it stopped. All right.